Welcome to Map Grow, the RPG art show. My name is Kyle, and today I am giving you the coward's guide to digital coloring. Now, I am using Adobe Photoshop, but most of the stuff I'm going to be talking about will also apply to Clip Studio and, to a lesser extent, Procreate on a tablet. Most industry standard editing software is highly overpowered for what I need it for, but I end up using so many of Adobe's products for podcasts and video production and logo design anyway that it just makes sense for me to use Photoshop. That said, it is a little bit like using the NASA control room to file my taxes. It, Photoshop just does a lot of stuff that I don't ever mess with as an illustrator and cartoonist. Notice for all of the line art, I am oftentimes outlining the entire figure in a thick black line. This is to A, help it stand out on a virtual tabletop, and B, to make it easier to fill in with color flats later. So the style that I'm using is not just what I think things should look like or how I enjoy drawing things, it is making the rest of the workflow easier because as a commercial artist, one of my chief concerns is how long it takes me to do my job. I have other jobs I need to work on, I have lessons I need to prepare, I have podcasts to record, I have laundry to do and chili to make. Think of the chili! So step one of the coward's guide to digital coloring is have excellent crisp line art, which I've already done an episode on. Step two is to make sure that you are coloring with aliased tools instead of anti-aliased tools. Let me explain what I mean. These circles are made with the pencil tool, which means that they are going to be pixel perfect circles. They look very jagged when you zoom in. These other circles are made with the brush tool and are anti-aliased. You can see all the extra transparent pixels that make them look fuzzy when you zoom in. Now here is the issue. If I use my magic wand tool to select one of the aliased circles, it makes a pixel perfect selection, especially if I have anti-alias unchecked on the selection tool. I can very easily make a selection and edit the values, hues, and, or, or, or fills. I can change anything that I want with a perfect selection. Look what happens when I use the selection tool on the anti-alias circle. You see all of these extra mixed pixels do not get selected. And you can kind of go through and make a bunch of little selections and shift click and do all this stuff, but you can see how much faster and how much more perfect these selections are on the jagged, pixelated, aliased circles. You want to use selection tools like the magic wand or the polygonal lasso tool because it saves you time. So we're going to find a way to use our line art to make our selections and enter into the color flatting phase. You might think of this phase as sort of like a coloring book. We're not worried so much about rendering or light sources or shadows, anything like that. What we are looking for is just what is the flat color that we can make everything that needs to be that color. All the skin is skin tone, all the shirt is shirt color, all the pants, all the shoes, all that kind of stuff. The first thing we're going to do is turn the line art layer to multiply blending mode. This allows all of the white colors to become transparent or translucent and all the black colors on that layer to be opaque and this allows the line art to be colored underneath non-destructively. So we are going to be coloring on a layer beneath that called the flats layer. And trust me, you want to practice proper layer hygiene. You want to lock layers that you are not using and you want to name the layers as you go. To reduce eye strain, I like to keep a dark gray background layer uh, so I'm not looking into a pure white screen half the time. Using my magic wand tool, I'm going to make sure that the checkboxes for contiguous and sample all layers are checked, but not anti-alias, because we want that nice pixel perfect selection. Sample all layers is going to make sure that we can use the lines to make our selection, and contiguous is going to keep it contained within those lines. 
But if we fill in just that selection and turn it black, we can see all of these stray pixels that didn't get selected because our line art isn't actually pixel perfect. There's a lot of anti-aliasing there as well. So we need to account for this in our selection process. By holding down the shift key, we can make lots of selections all at once and then going into the menu at the top where it says select, we can go to modify, expand by three pixels. And we can see that our selection then reaches underneath all of the line art and it's going to give us a much nicer fill. But I hear you saying, Kyle, I thought you had chili to make. You're not seriously going to dig through all these drop down menus and do this for every single fill. Well, the answer is of course, no. Photoshop has these wonderful things called actions that allow us to do all of these fill expand moves all with a single keystroke. Let's start by making all the selections that we're going to expand and fill. Then on the toolbar across the top of the screen, we're going to open up window then actions and that will give us access to our actions menu if you don't already have it on your sidebar we're going to click on create new action we're going to name this action something really exciting uh, selection expand three pixel fill foreground just so we know exactly what it does from here you can select a function key to assign this action to so every time you hit say f3 or shift f5 it will run this action that we are about to record click the record button and then the ok button in the dialog box that comes up and you notice that our little record symbol at the bottom of our actions window is lit up which means anything that shows up in our history or that can be undone will be recorded so we're going to go back up and hit select, modify, expand by three, and then I'm going to hit shift backspace and fill with foreground color and hit the OK button. And then I'm just going to use the marquee tool, the rectangle tool to click off of the selection to deselect it and then hit the stop button. And boom schnitzel, you got yourself an action. Make your selections and then hit whatever function key you assigned it to and it will automatically expand and fill with whatever color you have in your foreground. So you can move very quickly just by keeping your color palette open, making selections by clicking with the magic wand, holding down the shift key and then hitting F3 or F5 or whatever you assigned it to. And you can move through your color flatting process really quickly. Quickly. Now there's always going to be little pieces that are hard to get, but you can swipe back through and fix those as you go. You are still going to save a lot of time by doing it this way and cleaning up the little pieces that didn't get selected as opposed to using your mouse or stylus with a brush tool and just hand doing all of your flats. Selection tools are going to be much faster. Every little click, every little time you have to move the mouse is time wasted. And because all of your color flats are aliased, it's very easy to use the paint bucket with contiguous unclicked to very quickly experiment with lots of different colors. And it's going to be a pixel perfect fill every time. If you want to add some really quick and basic shading, use the polygonal lasso tool to uh, select the part of that fill uh, that you want to change color and then just Use your paint bucket tool with that selection and very quickly drop in a new color. There are a couple of extra steps that I would take to bring it up an extra level, but the bulk of the work is already finished. Oftentimes the next step I will take is decide if I need any line art colored. If I want to uh, indicate that something is made of liquid or energy or gas, I will color the line work itself. Now there's lots of different ways to do this. If you have a different way of doing it, keep it to yourself. I've been doing this for years. I'm very comfortable with the way that I do things. Don't at me. This is the way that I do it. On the line art layer, I will use the magic wand to select all of the black lines, 
then make a new layer upon which I apply a mask of those black lines. I can fill that whole layer in with black, but I can also come in with a pencil tool or a brush and color underneath that mask. And it's a great way of working non-destructively because all of those marks and colors are their own thing and they're just showing through the line art, but I can disable the masking layer and still make all of these selections like you see on, on the screen. If I need to be very precise in how I am recoloring the line work, I will oftentimes use a polygonal lasso tool to make sure I am only getting the pieces of that line work that I really want. Uh, this is, again, just a lot faster for me than using a stylus or a mouse to make those, uh, those changes and marks. Now it is time to add our highlights. I'm going to make a new layer and set it to the screen blending mode, which is going to cause a, an illumination effect. I'm going to choose kind of like a, a mustardy brown and uh, make my selection of only the parts that I want that highlight to be colored upon. Uh, I'm, I'm selecting, I'm making that selection on the flats layer and then moving back up to the highlights layer to make sure that I'm coloring on the right layer. Again, being sure to lock layers that I'm not using. So this is what it looks like when it is just on the normal blending mode, but you can see if we switch this to the screen blending mode, this has the effect of, of looking like, you know, some kind of diffused sunlight situation. Oftentimes I will cut this highlight layer down to 50% opacity, so it's not screaming over the color flat choices that I made. And because this highlight is on its own layer and that one color is going to mix differently upon all the colors that are below it, I can just choose one highlight color and, and, and go through really quickly and use all these aliased expensive brushes to get all that texture. Meanwhile, I can still have those flats for these solid selections that I need. And the way that I make shadows specifically for these minis is just to make a new layer, make a masking of all of the flats, and then within that mask, I make a purple gradient on a multiply blending mode for that layer. That purple has a, a way of, of enriching the color palette because it is the color complement of this yellow that I've added for the highlight. And again, I'll cut this down to 50% opacity because I really like the colors that I have in the first place. You can see with just a little bit of effort how much of an impact this has over a very simple flat color process. That just about does it for this video. I hate doing tech demos and tutorials on how to use Photoshop, but I see a need for it. I see so many emerging artists just kind of getting stuck in the quicksand of listening to people that are not working in the same way that they want to work. And this causes them to waste time learning things they don't need to learn that actively sabotage their own workflow. So I really do enjoy being all philosophical and stuff, but I will always make videos that I think people will actually need. So if you have questions or things that you would like me to make a video on, please leave a comment down below or reach out to me on Twitter at Kyle Latino or on patreon.com slash Until next time, my friends, farewell.